Catherine de' Medici was a member of the famous Medici family of Florence. She would go on to marry the future King of France and become queen. Yet her husband died prematurely, leaving her to guide her sons. She soon gained a reputation of being an evil, power-hungry queen who poisoned her enemies and massacred others, and also had links to the occult. But were any of these dark rumours actually true? This is her story. Catherine de' Medici was born on the 13th of April 1519 in Florence, the capital of the Florentine Republic, which dominated Tuscany in central Italy during the early modern period. Though the city was nominally a republic, it had been dominated with few interruptions by the Medici banking family since the late 14th century. They had also played an individually significant role in the Italian Renaissance, and Catherine was the great-granddaughter of Lorenzo the Magnificent, who had patronised and supported Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo and Sandra Botticelli, amongst others. While the period of the Italian Renaissance was one of great cultural achievement on the Italian peninsula, it was also one of profound political instability, as France and Spain, the European superpowers of that day, vied for hegemony over Italy's numerous smaller city-states. At the time of Catherine's birth, the Medici family were gravitating towards France, and as a result, when she was just 14 years of age, and after a tumultuous childhood, in which both her parents had died before she was one year old, Catherine was married to Henry of Valois, the second eldest son of King Francis I of France. The marriage was initially difficult. The motives for the dynastic union were thwarted in 1534 when Giulio de' Medici, who as Pope Clement VII had negotiated the union with France, died. His successor, Pope Paul III, now threw the papacy support towards Spain and cut off a papal pension which Catherine had been in receipt of as part of the marriage alliance. Additionally, Prince Henry showed little interest in his bride in the early years and instead kept a string of mistresses and was even in love with one of them, the beautiful Diane de Poitiers, a woman 20 years Henry senior but who was said to look much younger. Furthermore, for the first 10 years of their marriage, the couple were unable to produce any children. This made Catherine, a woman seen as an outsider, even more unpopular within France. As a result, she tried various strange concoctions to try and get pregnant, and when she eventually did, suspicions that she dabbled in the occult or witchcraft began to spread. Yet in time, things improved. Catherine was praised for her learning and sophistication by the French court as years went by, and she was a significant figure in the spread of the Renaissance north to the French court in Paris. Additionally, beginning in 1544, Henry and Catherine began to have children. When one arrived, more quickly followed, and in total they had 10 children over the next 14 years, seven of which survived into adulthood. Catherine had also moved in line to become queen. In 1536, Henry's older brother Francis, the heir designate to their father Francis I, contracted a fever and died. Henry was now the heir designate to the king, and when the long reigning monarch finally died in 1547, Henry succeeded as Henry II, with Catherine as his queen. Their relationship though, remained frosty on many levels, and Henry did not allow his wife to exercise any real political authority. Well, Catherine was largely kept in the background, while Henry's lover Diane got all his attention, as well as titles, property, and many gifts in the form of expensive clothing and jewellery. Henry even appointed Diane as Catherine's lady-in-waiting. During this time, Catherine took to the sciences, and became fascinated by astrology, astronomy and physics. She also became friendly with the reputed seer, Nostradamus, and because of this, tales of her interest with the black arts and necromancy began to spread. As well as this, she was claimed to have agents who used poison to kill her enemies, and while all of this is questionable 
and likely exaggerated. It is reported that, during her time in France, the sale of antidote soared. Then, in 1559, Henry died in a bizarre jousting accident, during a series of games held to mark the eventual establishment of peace with Spain, after decades of fighting. Thus, Catherine was cast as a political novice, into the role of ruling France as Queen Regent, on behalf of her son, the new King Francis II, and she would occupy a prominent position in French politics for the next 30 years. In the end, Francis II's reign proved short-lived too, as he died in December 1560, just 17 months after becoming king and when he was just 16 years old. It's unclear what he died of, but the most likely cause was meningitis. He was succeeded by his younger brother Charles, who became King Charles IX. The new monarch was just 10 years old, and Catherine would have to fight for his interest for many years, as he grew up within the labyrinth of French politics during the mid-16th century. Catherine had her work cut out, as France had ended up with a child king at the exact moment that the country needed strong central leadership. At the heart of all of this was the issue of religion. During the 1530s and 1540s, Protestantism had spread westwards from Germany into Western Europe. The low countries around the present-day Netherlands and the Swiss cantons had quickly become regions in which Protestants predominated. However, the situation in France was more complex. Some parts of the country, such as the north and northwest around Normandy, and Brittany remained overwhelmingly committed to Roman Catholicism, but large parts of the south of France, particularly those in proximity to western Switzerland and the city of Geneva, embraced Protestantism. These French Protestants became known as the Huguenots, and were agitating for freedom of worship in France. So committed were they that, in 1562, the Huguenots entered into a war with the French government to obtain freedom of worship. It was the start of the French Wars of Religion, which would plague France for the remainder of the 16th century. Catherine was central to the Wars of Religion, during which she found herself trying to negotiate between the two camps. The Huguenots on the one hand, led by Gaspard de Coligny, and the ultra-Catholic House of Guise on the other side. The Guise faction sought to control the monarchy, and dominate the young Charles's government throughout the 1560s. Catherine's goal was to steer a via media between the opposing forces, and carve out the best possible result for her son when he attained his majority. As such, she was prominent in the camp of French political figures who defined themselves as politique at this time, those who prioritised political stability and peace above the cause of either radical Catholicism or Protestantism. To these ends, Catherine oscillated between favouring military engagement against the Huguenots at times, and negotiating with them at other stages in the 1560s, often seeking to offset the enormous influence the Guise family had acquired amongst the Catholic population in the country. She also negotiated a series of marriage alliances. Charles himself wed Elizabeth of Austria in 1570, the daughter of the Holy Roman Emperor, Maximilian II. She also tried to negotiate a marriage alliance with the Protestant Queen of England, Elizabeth I, through a union with one of her younger sons, and negotiations for a possible betrothal to France's Duke of Alicon and Anjou, dragged on until the late 1570s. However, it was the marriage alliance that Catherine negotiated for her daughter Margaret to marry Henry of Bourbon, the Prince of Navarre, in 1572, which led to the events which Catherine is most vilified and remembered for. Henry of Bourbon was the prince of the small principality of Navarre in southwestern France, along the Pyrenean border with Spain. Though a prince in his own right, he was also a subject of the French crown. But there was an additional complication to the marriage union. Henry was a Protestant, and had in the course of the early 1570s become one of the leaders of the French Huguenots, despite his youth. As such, the marriage of King Charles's sister to Henry 
was negotiated in an effort to bring the wars of religion to an end, and also Catherine hoped, to reduce the influence of the Guise family in the process. Thus, Henry and Margaret were married on the 18th of August 1572, in the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Nevertheless, the wedding of Henry and Margaret was overshadowed by an event which occurred a week later. The wedding had seen thousands of Henry's supporters drifting into Paris, and as French Huguenots roamed the streets of Catholic Paris, tensions in the city began to escalate. These now boiled over on the night of the 23rd of August, five days after the wedding and into the morning of the 24th, the feast day of Saint Bartholomew. The Saint Bartholomew's Day Massacre, as it would become known, was one of the most infamous incidents of religious violence perpetrated during the wars of religion, which plagued Europe for a century in the aftermath of the Protestant Reformation. The incident which sparked the massacre was an attempt on the life of Gaspar de Coligny, one of the leading Huguenots of the time, on the 22nd of August. Tensions fled in Paris as a result, and on the night of the 23rd, this boiled over as Catholics throughout Paris began attacking the thousands of Huguenots who were visiting the city. By the morning of the 24th, the violence had spread widely outside of Paris itself. By the time it ended, at least 5,000 people, mostly French Protestants, had been killed, and perhaps as many as 20,000, while dead bodies and blood littered the streets of central Paris. Catherine was soon being vilified for having instigated the massacre, and the supposition that she provoked the violence and failed to make her son, King Charles IX, stop it, had led to her developing a reputation as the Black Queen, or a master manipulator. In this light, Catherine was perceived as having organised a union between her daughter and Henry of Navarre, as a means of drawing the Huguenot leadership and their followers to Paris, where she then organised for them to be massacred on Saint Bartholomew's Day. Yet, for all that Catherine was cast in this light, she was not really responsible for the violence. The attempt on Coligny's life, which led directly to the massacre the following night, was likely the work of the Guise family, who wanted to scupper the potential alliance between the Crown and the Huguenots. Moreover, Catherine did convene the Royal Council on the 23rd of August, prior to the massacre, in an effort to restore order in Paris before blood was spilt. That this was unsuccessful was owing to her son Charles, a weak and ineffective ruler whose failure to act was compounded by reports that he muttered on the 23rd to his advisers, kill them all. Thus, Catherine's reputation as the mastermind of the Saint Bartholomew's Day Massacre, an event which outraged Protestant sentiment across Europe for years to come, is almost certainly unwarranted. Catherine's role in French politics continued well beyond the events of 1572. Two years later, Charles died of tuberculosis without an heir. Therefore, Catherine's next eldest son, Henry, now became king as Henry III. However, the new monarch was absent in Poland at the time, where he was a contender for the throne of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Consequently, for a time in 1574, Catherine yet again became the Queen Regent on her absent son's behalf, and she would remain an advisor to Henry throughout his reign. However, she wasn't well liked by the French public, and she was frequently blamed for any problems that arose. In light of this, in 1574, an anonymous author published a piece which was extremely critical of her, and so Catherine's reputation as an evil queen was further cemented. During her rule, countless accusations about Catherine were thrown around. These included that she poisoned the mother of Henry of Navarre, had a room in her castle full of poisons, and that she even provided prostitutes for her recently deceased son when he was still quite young. In 1577, Juan Pierre L'Estoile described a banquet held by Catherine. Here he claimed, at this lovely banquet, the most beautiful and charming women of the court were employed as serving ladies, being half naked, 
with their hair down loose like brides. But this was probably quite far-fetched. Well, he wasn't even there. In the 1570s and into the 1580s, Catherine strove gallantly to stop France from descending into even greater unrest. The wars of religion continued, but she successfully managed to steer her sons, the King and the Duke of Alencon and Anjou, from entering into a new war with Spain in the late 1570s, for which the crown was completely unprepared in the context of France's own internal instability. She also managed to limit the power of the Guises to some extent, but there remained a thorn in the country's frayed political landscape, at several times threatening to negotiate their own alliance with Spain and bring Spanish troops into the country against the Huguenots. By the mid-1580s, Catherine was elderly and increasingly ill, and died on the 5th of January 1589, aged 69. Just nine months later, her son Henry III was assassinated, near Paris by Jacques Clément, a Catholic fanatic who was unhappy at the monarch's unwillingness to confront the French Huguenots head-on. Henry died himself without a male heir, and his younger brother Francis had died some years earlier. So now, in a strange twist of fate, Henry of Navarre, whose wedding 17 years earlier to Catherine's daughter Margaret had triggered the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, became the new king. As King Henry IV, he soon agreed to convert to Catholicism if it meant that the wars of religion could be brought to an end, famously proclaiming that Paris is well worth a mass. In 1598, he brought the religious conflict to an end when he issued the Edict of Nantes, which gave French Protestants the freedom of worship they had long sought. Thus, the French wars of religion were ended, but not by Catherine's sons, but by the man to whom she married her daughter in 1572 as the prelude to one of France's most tragic and notorious incidents. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video on Catherine de Medici, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave me a like and a comment down below. And if you're new, why not subscribe? If you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them below. And I hope you guys have notifications turned on so you get all my videos as soon as I upload them. Anyway, that's all from me. So I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.